Hello, everyone. A Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I hope you will have a lovely, cozy holiday season with your friends and family. Well, do you know how to take a picture like this? We're going to teach you. You know, we started our photo contest in our show in 2015, and some of you have been watching and following us and participating ever since. Peg Runyon, a retired teacher, took up bird photography as a hobby, and we've been watching her become such a skilled photographer. You've probably seen many of her pictures because she's won many uh, photo contests, and she's always shared her photography. We also posted her pictures on social media. It's been such a treat. So today, she's sharing how to take pictures like these. You know, this was done in her backyard with her backyard birds. She didn't go anywhere special to do this. First, she bought a tray for a dog crate. She set it up outside. She filled it with water. She made sure that everything was level. Then she placed rocks, moss, branches, flowers, whatever you want to make it pretty. And she hid some sunflower seeds because these are her backyard birds that are used to eating in her backyard. And then she placed a chair very close to the setup. She uses a blind. A lot of photographers do that, but you don't actually have to. You know, I don't when I go out to take pictures of birds. Uh, as long as you stand still for a while, your backyard birds will ignore you completely. As you can see, there is a Peg's dog in one of the frames and the birds were not bothered at all. Peg is also sharing the camera settings that she used to take these pictures. We are definitely trying this out in the spring when the water won't freeze. So have fun. If the weather is nice, try it out and please share your creations with us. Amy Pinchuk here in St. Lazare, Quebec is used to seeing huge flocks of grackles in her backyard as they are migrating south, but she didn't see the same numbers this fall, so she's wondering if their populations are declining. Hi, Amy. So after seeing large migrating flocks of grackles showing up in your property near St. Lazare, Quebec, each September through October for the last 30 years, suddenly you're not seeing any in the fall of 2022. And naturally, you're wondering why. I did a check on the status of the Canadian population of common grackles. At one point, they numbered anywhere from 5 to 50 million birds. And while their populations have declined by more than 58% since 1970, grackles are still regarded as an abundant and widespread species in North America, east of the Rockies at least. In late summer and early fall, they do form these huge migratory flocks, sometimes numbering up to a million birds. And while they do like to visit feeders individually, sometimes to the point of becoming a nuisance, they're also known to be quite an agricultural pest, with those huge flocks often descending upon farmers' fields to eat seeds and grains. And likely that's what you've been seeing each fall. As to why they didn't appear this particular fall, I can only speculate as to the cause. Somehow, I think that it's related to the available food supply in your area and other places to the east and west of your place. Something's changed to make the birds go elsewhere. Maybe they found a better food source and they've gone there instead. Or it could be somehow related to climate warming, which is happening at an alarming rate and which is having an impact upon the migratory habits of various bird species, including songbirds. However, I'm not currently aware of any particular study focusing on grackles, though. One other possibility, still related to climate warming, is that the grackles are simply late in showing up. It seems to me that our good weather has shifted by a month which would explain why our Mays now experience winter-like weather and our Septembers and Octobers are much warmer. When it comes to communication for purposes like establishing a territory, showing dominance and attracting a mate, songbirds, as their name suggests, generally use learned vocalizations in the form of singing and calling. Scientists studying the development of human language in individuals pay close attention to studies done on young songbirds because like humans, songbirds learn their language while young and also develop the complex muscle movements to make the required sounds. But there's a neurological link in the form of a protein called parvalbumin, abbreviated as PV, which is found in the neurons in those specialized regions in the brain associated with learning the respective languages, songs and calls. A team of scientists at Brown University at Providence, Rhode Island, 
has discovered a PV protein in the regions of brains of woodpeckers that match those of songbirds for learning and producing song. However, it's not being found in any bird species that does not learn its vocalizations, such as emus, ducks, or penguins. Moreover, these PV regions in the woodpeckers' brains become activated by the birds' drumming behavior rather than by their vocalizations. This suggests that woodpeckers are using drumming in the same way that songbirds use song. But as the team of scientists points out, the study does not provide enough evidence to prove that woodpeckers actually learn their drumming, but it certainly does suggest it. Ten years ago, if you told me that sandhill cranes were a backyard or feeder birds, I'd say you were crazy. Well, since then I've changed my mind because over the years we've received tons of pictures and videos showing uh, sandhill cranes in people's backyards, knocking on people's patio doors, visiting and eating uh, at our squirrel buster feeders. So, now I'd say they are backyard birds. Sandhill cranes are a rather complex bird species because there are all sorts of populations and subpopulations and species and subspecies. But in general, when you see a sandhill crane, you'll know it's a sandhill crane. They all look pretty similar. Females and males look the same, but females are slightly smaller. Because of their um, complex distribution, their breeding season is all over the place. They can start breeding in December in Florida and go all the way to August. Here in the north where they migrate to breed, it starts sort of in April and goes all the way to June. Pairs mate for life and they choose each other depending on how complex their dancing displays are. It's quite extraordinary to see them do that. Their juveniles stay with them for the first winter and sandhill cranes can live up to 35 years in the wild. Their diets, well, they're omnivores, so basically anything they can get their beaks on. If it's a bird feeder, yay. If it's a earthworm, sure, snakes, lemmings, anything they can find, they will eat it. They are actually seen on farmers' uh, fields quite often, cleaning up all the crops. Well, I hope our December photo contest gave you a good laugh and put you in the holiday spirit. Because it's the holiday season, we have five winners and we have seven in our top five. Let's check them out. Congratulations, everybody. That was the last photo contest of 2022. And here are all the themes for 2023. We'll be posting them on our website as well. January is on the move. Well, goodbye to all of you in 2022. Have a fabulous holiday season. Take care and we'll see you next year.